Anya crept to her praying place under the hay wagon and pulled her skirts around her for warmth. Even though it was, a time for, it was time for spring to spread its sunshine over the Ukraine, the wind was still wintry and the sky was slate gray. Dear Jesus, Anya prayed, help our garden grow again and let Mashenka give lots of milk. As she thought of sugar beets and boiled buttered cabbage, her mouth watered. Easter will be different this year with Papa away at war. We don't even have any eggs to turn into colored treasures. Please forgive me for feeling sad and help me remember that you bring new life. A frightful honking shattered Anya's quiet moment. A great gray-lied goose rose up, hissing and flapping its frantic wings at a lunging fox. Fly, Anya shouted, but the goose held her ground. Anya raced toward the flock, toward the fox, flailing her arms and yelling, but the snarling fox was too quick. The fox lunged once more and dragged off its feathered meal. Anya's eyes stung with tears. The goose's mate must be dead too, she thought, or he'd have helped her guard their nest. Now their eggs will never hatch. She sighed. The eggs were getting cold. Four of them lay orphaned in a circle of straw. But even in her sadness, Anya understood that the fox and her babies were hungry too. Then she recognized the sudden gift she had been given. Anya pulled the folded kerchief, her babushka, from her head and spread it on the ground. She gently placed the eggs in it, cushioning them with the dried grass and soft down feathers from the goose's nest. Then she carefully wrapped them up. Anya held the eggs close to her. Even though the wind whipped her hair over her red-cheeked face, she felt warmed by her swirling thoughts. She would have Easter eggs after all. Since Anya had been a baby, she had watched Mama make Paisanki eggs. Last year, she had decorated her own egg for the first time. Mama had said that Anya worked fast, and Papa had agreed that she had a true artist's touch. Anya would decorate an egg for everyone in her family. When she presented the eggs, she'd use the greeting, Christ is risen, as Mama and Papa had taught her. Hoping she would not be noticed, Anya slipped through the door. Anya called Mama without turning around. Please tend to Jarek while I finish the bread. Yes, Mama, she replied. Anya hurried to her room. She took her rag doll Dasha from her basket and tucked her new precious bundle into it instead. Then she ran to da Jarek's room and made him laugh by using Dasha as a puppet. After supper and chores, Anya lay in bed, snuggling Dasha and thanking God for the unexpected blessing. Tomorrow, she would clean the eggs to get them ready. She pictured her egg decorating supplies tucked safely away on the top pantry shelf. Her heart pounded extra hard as she imagined the different designs she would put on each egg. Fishes and flowers, hearts and hens, suns and stars, and most important, crosses. An egg for Mama, one for Jarek, and I'll save Papa's till he gets home, she whispered to her doll. She smiled. That leaves the last one for you, Dasha. Anya fell asleep thinking, our home without Papa is like the goose's nest without her gander. As Dawn crept through her window, Anya heard the faintest crackle, like a beetle clicking. She listened hard again, but heard nothing. She shrugged and pulled on her sweater. Then she heard another sound, like the tick of a pebble against a wagon wheel. Anya knelt beside the basket and unwrapped her babushka. No, she wailed. Every one of her eggs was cracked. But how? She'd been so careful. Mama rushed in. What happened? She cried. Anya spilled out her tail and her tears against Mama's nightgown. Now we won't have any Easter eggs, she sputtered between sobs. You're right, Mama said. We'll have something better. Anya heard a smile in Mama's voice. As Anya raised her puzzled face, Mama turned it toward the basket. A small beak with a hard white tip pecked at the shell, which cracked like the ice on Petrovsky's pond during the springtime thaw. Three more gray lag gos goslings emerged. They were wet and tired from hatching, but strong and ready to meet the world at Easter time. Now we will have feathers for pillows and quilts, Mama said, and Easter eggs forever, Anya cried. Suddenly she and Mama heard a knocking sound. Oh dear, exclaimed Mama, we've wakened Jarek. I'll get him, Mama, Anya offered, but Jarek was still fast asleep. The banging came again. Mama, it's the door, said Anya. Mama frowned. Who would knock this early? She clasped her shawl at her neck with one hand and slowly unlatched the door with the other. Anya heard Mama gasp. Then her arms raised and the shawl spilled down Mama's back like a waterfall. Anya noticed a man's arm leaning on a crutch and his other circling Mama's waist. Then peering over Mama's shoulder, she saw the familiar face. Papa, Anya cried, running to join the hug. Papa had a surprise for Anya, too. He re reached into his bag and pulled out a small box. Be very careful, he said quietly. Anya unwrapped the oval treasure. Oh, Papa, she squealed, an egg all ready for me to decorate. Thank you. Later, Anya would tell Papa the whole story about the goose, the fox, and the goslings, 
Later, too, she would decorate the most special Pisanki egg of all, the only Pisanki egg of the year. But first, she had to do something more important. Anya went outside, squinting at the brilliant sunshine. Suddenly, she noticed that the yard was dotted with creamy snowdrops, and one golden crocus had but blossomed near the door. Anya crept to her praying place and crossed her arms over her heart. Thank you, Jesus, she said, for this season of new life. As echoes of gentle honking filled the clear morning sky, Anya tingled with happiness from head to toe. Let's pray. Lord, we're thankful that you are always there to remind us of new life. Amen.